Thank you for 500 subscribers. I know that's not a lot, but it's an amazing start and an amazing goal to hit. So as a thank you for that, I'm going to be starting a new franchise. This is going to be my first ever full franchise. And what better team to do than my favorite NFL team, the Seattle Seahawks. This team had one of the most interesting and depressing off seasons ever. Maybe not ever, but you know what I mean. It was very interesting. Releasing Bobby Wagner, trading Russell Wilson, two Hall of Famers off the team. Rumors of trades for DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Not to mention losing solid, but not as much talked about players like Dwayne Brown, DJ Reed. But then also making sneaky decent additions like Uchenna Nwosu, Charles Cross, Abe Lucas, Noah Fant from the Russell Wilson trade, Shelby Harris also from that trade. Like, this is a very different team from just the year before. So I thought, what better team to do than the team rocking with Geno Smith at QB? So first things first, let's get a look at this roster. So let's start from maybe the brightest spot of the team, which is the receiver room. Tyler Lockett should be a very good wide receiver for us. Better hairline here than in real life, for sure. But he has amazing hands, and people actually kind of forget forget that he's like very fast too. He was like the best returner in the league six or seven years ago whenever he actually returned kicks. He's a very good route runner. Now these are my custom rosters. I do think he is a better route runner than this, but I kind of have to make his stats not as good as he is in real life because he would be like a 95 overall and I don't, that's not necessarily accurate. I feel like even 89 is a bit pushing it, but he's a very good receiver. And then obviously DK Metcalf, very young, very very good wide receiver. The only problem with him is really fumbles and I guess drops. But other than that, he's a monster. Elite speed, size. His big thing is just straight up mossing people. And it's amazing to watch. Plus, he's amazing after the catch. We also have Marquise Goodwin, who obviously is another very speedy player with 95 speed. He'll, he will be very fun to use here. And then I'm realizing this receiver room is all speed. Dwayne Eskridge with 92 speed, which even feels a little disrespectful. Very young receiver going into year number two here. Didn't play much in his rookie year, but maybe he could break out for us as kind of a nice third receiver. Penny Hart is almost a running back type, not the fastest in the world, but another receiver that is great after the catch. And Derek Young, a DK Metcalf type player. Not as big and not quite as fast, but he does bring that size, speed, go up and get it type of, type of play, if you will. Was a seventh round pick out of this year's draft. And then this running back room, people don't realize, but Rashad Penny was like the best running back in the NFL through like the last seven weeks of the year. Last year, he had like by far the most yards after contact, yards per carry. I don't know if he had like far and away the most yards per carry, but I know he had a very good amount. He's just a very balanced type of player. He breaks a lot of tackles. He has solid speed, not much of a receiver, but is a very solid running back and could be our running back for the entire series. But if he's not, likely it will be Kenneth Walker. Obviously a rookie out of Michigan State. Good speed, good trucking. Actually a comparable player to Rashad Penny. He is a little smaller, I believe. At least physically looking. He's 5'9", 209. Rashad Penny is 5'11", 220. Yeah, definitely a little bit smaller, but has a similar style of play. And for some reason, when I'm watching them, I confuse him him with Tyler Lockett. Don't ask me why, but I do. <laughs> Travis Homer's had a nice little year in real life too. He'll be a decent third running back. And I also like DJ Dallas. Now I'm saving the uh, key part for last, if you couldn't tell. This tight end room, this team loves their three tight end sets. And I love this tight end room, so I like it. Noah Fant, who is kind of your, I guess, speedy tight end. 89 speed, 91 catching, obviously not much of a blocker. Almost a receiver playing tight end, not really because he is bigger, but not much blocking, but is great in the receiving game. Will Disley has had a good comeback year, kind of proving that he is worth the contract he was given, is not the fastest in the world. I feel like 77 speed is very generous even, but does have good hands, is a really good blocker, and he just kind of has like almost an it factor about him. So he could be our just kind of red zone type of player, just solid hands, or our check down guy, something like that. And somebody I really like 
like in real life that I predicted to have a breakout year and it looks like the Seahawks really like him too. Talk about a receiver play in tight end. This is a guy who is, I think, almost Mike Gesicki light or something like that. He's kind of like a big slot receiver. I feel like his route running here is very disrespectful. I should up that in my rosters, but I'm a big fan of him in real life. I feel like he's even faster than 80 speed too. But yeah, I like Colby Parkinson. So we have a great tight end room and I kind of want to replicate that three tight end stuff because I do kind of like that stuff. The offensive line is a bit iffy. Charles Cross in real life has allowed three sacks already at this point. Is a very good pass blocker. I thought he was the best pass blocker in the class in a very strong tackle class. And I was very happy when the Seahawks took him, believe me. Now, like I said, he has had some growing pains a little bit. I dropped him down to overall from my original rating of a 75, but he has definitely impressed as a run blocker as well. He's been overall not amazing, but solid for a rookie. Now, speaking of someone who has overperformed as a rookie, and I kind of predicted it, is Abe Lucas. He has shown very much that he can run block. Obviously came from the pass-heavy Washington State and has come into the league and been one of the better rookie tackles in the NFL. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on the offensive line. I just wanted to talk about the rookies. Damian Lewis uh, was much better when he played right guard, but they got Gabe Jackson. I like Gabe Jackson, but personally, I would rather have Damian Lewis playing right guard and have either Phil Haynes play at left guard or even put Gabe Jackson at left guard because Damian Lewis looks like dog shit at left guard where he was amazing his rookie year at right. So yeah, but I do like Gabe Jackson as well. Austin Blythe has not been very good this year and Kyle Fuller is one of the worst players I've ever seen. Also, I'm, I'm a Jake Curran stan. That's why I have him at a 66. He's such a good run blocker. But finally, the, uh, the elephant in the room that I've been trying to put off is the quarterback situation. Now, Geno Smith hasn't been bad this year. The Seahawks have not looked great, but we'll just say it's not the offense's fault. Geno, I have ranked at a 70 currently. That actually looks a lot like him in real life, to be fair. His face scan, it's almost like it's a scan of his face. I wonder why that looks like him. I'm... Okay, uh, <laughs> decent ratings here on Geno. Honestly, kind of looks better than a 70 overall. 87 throw powers, eh, but good accuracy, good play action, throw on the run, all that sort of stuff. Not the fastest QB in the world, clearly, but 80 speed is definitely serviceable. I'm kind of a Geno stan in real life. Like, see, now personally, if I were an NFL GM, which you know is never gonna happen, I would just for fun throw darts at players that were high draft picks at one point. And Geno Smith is one of those that just didn't work work out, but they still have those skills and everything. And Geno Smith is finally getting a legit shot with a decent offense around him, because you gotta remember he's played for like the Jets and the Giants. Not exactly great organizations, I'm not saying the Seahawks are great, but he has good weapons to throw to and a decent offensive line this year. And he's done pretty well, he's impressed me and a lot of people this year. And the other elephant in the room, Drew Locke. Uh, yeah, I kind of fell off the, uh, Drew Locke hype train after the preseason and everything. Um, I was like, okay, we got him in the Russell Wilson trade. I wouldn't be shocked if he started for us and was good, but uh, <laughs> I didn't think he would lose the job to Gino, and he did, and... It's for a good reason. He looked horrid in the preseason, going up against backup defensive players and everything like that. Obviously, his career isn't dead dead yet, but it's, eh, I don't know. He's a guy I really loved coming out of Mizzou, but just hasn't really shown it. Um, I thought he would be great for Denver, honestly, but you should have known any, any QB that John Elway drafts is just not going to work out. I don't know why, but it just never works. They can be a decent prospect, but if they're drafted by the Denver Broncos under John Elway, they're not going to work out. And then this defense, um, you know, not exactly the Legion of Boom anymore, <laughs> to say the least. This has been one of the worst defenses I have ever seen in my entire life, and that is not putting it lightly. I have watched, I think maybe two years ago, the worst statistical defense of all time. I believe they were allowing like 450 yards per game through the first like four weeks or some stupid 
stupid shit like that. This defense looks worse, and it's actually the run game this time. The pass game is decent. They cannot stop a goddamn nosebleed in the run, and I'm a little bit surprised, but then again, I don't know. Also, I kinda hate this game because the Seahawks run a 3-4, not a 4-3. They don't actually have the Seahawks playbook in the game either. This is stupid. I guess let's go with the Nathaniel Hackett defense. I, I don't know. What team runs like a Bangio style defense? I actually don't remember the teams. I don't know. And what do we fit? We fit 3-4 under. We will roll with that. But yeah, like I was saying, this defense is horrid in the run game. And I don't really know why. I mean, Puna Ford, Al Woods, they've been great run defenders in their career. Shelby Harris hasn't been playing, but Quentin Jefferson, Brian Monet, they're not bad in the run game either. And really, the only thing Jordan Brooks and Cody Barton are good at is tackling in the run game, like that kind of stuff. If, I don't know, I don't know if Clint Hurt just isn't motivating these guys enough to try, but it hasn't been great so far. I'm not gonna spend too long on this defense, but obviously the big player is Jamal Adams, very overhated player in my opinion. Sure, he's not a great cover player, but as a box safety, he's probably the best box safety in the league. I mean, pretty inarguably he is. His nickname is Blitz Boy, but like, is that supposed to be a an offense? Like, I think blitzing in pass rush is probably the most valuable thing in the game. See, personally, I would take Blitz Boy as like a compliment almost. Because when he does it, he is very good at it. Like, one of the best pass rushing safeties of all time, probably the best of all time. He's great in the run game, and he's not even that bad in coverage. I mean, shit, you can do a lot worse. Unfortunately, he does get injured a lot, but here he won't be, at least not yet. Josh Jones, another one of the worst players I have ever seen in my entire life. That's kind of a theme with this team, uh, cause we have Cody Barton, he looks like dog shit this year. Same with Josh Jones, Kyle Fuller, a lot of that here. Quandre Diggs is a very good safety, a touch overrated coming from a Seahawks fan. I've never thought he was as good as people say, like top five. I'm like, chill, he gets interceptions, but interceptions are kind of an overrated stat. I mean, look at Trayvon Diggs. He's decent for sure. I think the 82, you could even bump it up to like an 84 and I'd be like, all right. Now the corners, they haven't really been playing Sidney Jones this year, but they should. I'm a huge fan of him and he was our best corner last year other than DJ Reed. I'm a big Artie Burns fan. He was very good last year for the Bears. Not very good, but like good, way better than he has been in his career. Justin Coleman comes back here, got injured in real life. Micah Jackson was a surprise breakout or Michael Jackson, Mr. He He himself, has been a decent corner this year as the number one. Um, obviously not perfect, but he's being thrown in as literally the fucking number one corner, and he's been all right. So you definitely take that. Tariq Woolen has looked good as a rookie. I mean, his first game was meh, but you don't expect him to look good as a rookie because literally probably less than two years ago, he was a goddamn receiver. He was not a corner. He played receiver at what, UTSA? Yeah, UTSA. He is very fast. 97 speed. You know what? That's not fast enough. Tariq Woolen's faster than that. I'm giving him 98 speed, 97 excel. He is very, very fast. So assuming he gets a lot of playing time, he should develop into one of our starting corners. I might honestly just start him right out the gate. Uchenna Nwosu has been a very good pass rusher for us. Definitely the best pass rusher here. Daryl Taylor, I thought he would have a great year, but has been terrible, honestly. I had him at a 76 going into the year because I thought he would be great. I've dropped him down to a 73. Boye Mafe has been a good surprise as a rookie. Daryl Johnson was decent in his like first game as a Seahawk. Alton Robinson I'm a huge fan of. This D-line is deep with a lot of good proven players. For some reason not playing in, playing well in real life but should be good here. Not to mention Trey Brown was a very good rookie last year up to getting hurt. Ryan Neal I'm a big fan of. I think he should be starting in real life over Josh Jones. Kobe Bryant has been terrible in real life, but is a high upside player for sure. So even though this team isn't the best, I feel like they should be doing better than they are in real life. Because the big question going into the year was Geno Smith, but he's doing well. It's just this defense. But throughout this series, we're going to work to improve this team because I'm not going to lie, this team is set up very, very well for the future. Not to mention, I believe we have two first round picks going into this draft. We can take a QB if we need it offensive line, edge, D-line, corner, whatever. But that was the introduction of our team for the series. So these are the sliders I'm gonna roll with. We're getting into kind of the like deep stuff of how 
the series is gonna go. I honestly just searched like what the most realistic XP, or not XP, but sliders, gameplay sliders for Madden 23 are, and this is what it gave me. Now, I'm not the best Madden player ever, so I bumped everything for us up by 10, because we are rolling on all Madden. And I have honestly not played this game once this year. I've done rebuilds and everything, but I have not done like gameplay at all. And then these are the CPU sliders right here. These are the special team sliders, just bumped up a little up or down depending on what it is. Injuries I have at 15, bases I think 25. These are the penalties, and honestly, I might turn some of these off because I could see these getting goddamn annoying if it removes like a huge play from us. And then all this I think I just left the same. So, uh, I am definitely not a gameplay channel, we'll say that. I am decent at Madden when I do play it, which is every like few months. I feel like if I played a lot, I could be amazing because I am good when I play after no practice, but we'll we'll just have to see throughout this uh, series. I'm sure I can flash back to this part of me saying I could be amazing while I'm throwing probably 30 interceptions on the season. Um, and then for XP sliders, I think I'll go like 110 for like almost everything. I think I might do something like this, 110 for almost everything, but just we'll go 105 for receivers, 115 for centers, and then 105 and 110 for certain players here on the defense. This is kind of just based off of how I've seen players progress in this year's game. We'll go 110 for kicker and punter too, I mean why not? But I might make adjustments to this as we go, depending on if it feels like we're not developing quick enough or developing too fast. We'll, we'll just have to see as we go, you know, that's gonna be the fun of this series because I've never done a series like this before. So you guys are gonna get to experience my first time. That, ugh, that's a bad sentence. Um, we have some upgrades here, some kind of important ones, uh, all backups except Cody Barton, but Cody Barton's like backup level. We'll just auto spend those. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I should have like actually spent those, but eh. But I think what I am going to do is simulate to the regular season and in the next episode, we're gonna play our first game. This episode is kind of just a franchise prep. So for the preseason, I am turning injuries off. Oh, I already had them off. I already prepared for that. Okay. So I'm turning injuries off. I don't want to have any uh, fun surprises like lose, losing Geno Smith or something for the season at the end of the preseason. That wouldn't be super fun for the series. So we're just going to turn them off for the preseason. Then I'll turn them back on for the season, obviously. So let's see how we do in this preseason. And hopefully we can get some actual like big upgrades throughout this. So we lose 10 to 6 to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ah, that must have been a fun game to watch. A 10-6 game in the preseason between Geno Smith and probably Mitch Trubisky. Ah, that would have been super fun. For Jordan Brooks, I am going to go, let's just go field general. I could do pass coverage, but this could give him coverage as well. Plus one strength, plus one zone. Wow, I can't speak. But yeah, statistically, he is a very good player, just not very good in coverage. He's got the speed. He showed good coverage before his final year at Texas Tech. It's just he hasn't really been able to regain that, I guess. I thought he would once he got into the league, but hasn't really so far. For Quinton Jefferson, let's just go run stopper. Stopper, we need all the run support we can get. He gets plus one finesse moves from that, okay. Plus two block shed, decent upgrades there. Ben Burkirvin, who I'm a huge fan of in real life, obviously, they lost him for the season, unfortunately, but I'm a huge fan of him. And he gets plus three play rec, plus two zone, huge upgrades there. And finally, the GOAT, Big Dick Michael Dixon. Let's go power. I don't know if it really makes a difference. Doesn't upgrade his overall, but what's that going to give him? Just plus two awareness. That's kind of lame. I was hoping it would give him like kick power or something. But let's see, any fun performances on the first game of the year? No rushing, Jesus. Penny Hart was our leading receiver. That's kind of interesting. I kind of do like him in real life. I wasn't sold on him. Oh, Jake Curran let up three sacks in one game. The rest of the line was terrible too. Wait, how many sacks is that? Is that three, four, five, six, seven? 
Ew. Uh, did we at least get any? Uh, Boye Mafe had one, and Cody Barton got a pick. Okay. Oh, uh, this preseason could actually be important in terms of player development and everything. In week two, we take another L to the Chicago Bears. 20 to 13. <laughs> Couple more upgrades here. We have Justin Coleman. The big thing we're hoping for, I guess, is speed. Let's go slot. Brings him up to a 73. Plus three, man. The slot upgrade is so broken. I'm surprised they haven't fixed that by this point. And Damian Lewis will definitely take that. That's actually pretty huge. We'll go power, obviously. Big upgrades. Plus two pass block power. Not bad. Definitely want him to be a good pass blocker for Geno Smith, the elite quarterback. And wide receiver mentor. This could be pretty huge. Maybe for D. Eskridge or Derek Young. Ooh, okay. Well, shouldn't it be... I mean, DK and Derek Young are pretty similar. I guess DK couldn't really be a mentor mentor already because he's not like old enough i mean i guess he could be he's good let's go um let's make him a deep threat that sounds kind of fun let's make Derek young a really good deep threat this could prove to be pretty huge plus two release and plus two deep route running for Derek young and then also we have a training camp standout i think these are typically defensive players right did my game crash uh <laughs> it apparently doesn't want me to know who the training camp breakout is oh my controller's vibrating okay good lord Okay, it is Jordan Brooks. That's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, he's already dead. Ooh, wait. Now, football IQ makes the most sense, but I believe he's at, what, 93 tackling? How about we add five more to that? Plus five tackling. Now, that sounds about, that sounds pretty good to me. I'm not gonna lie. Sure, giving a young player more awareness of what's going on on the field would be probably the smart thing to do, but he has 99 tackle with morale. Now, that's pretty fun. <laughs> That's, that's the fun option. You gotta go for the content here, and that's that's the fun option. Let's give a little checkup on the team here. Gino had a pretty good game throwing two touchdowns. He's definitely leading the uh, competition, although I already know who I'm gonna go with. The completion percentage is not great, but rushing was definitely a bit better and a bit heavier that game, it seems. Marquise Goodwin had an amazing game, 117 yards and a touchdown now. Blocking was definitely better, only two sacks allowed in that game. Jordan Bro is leading the team in tackles and one sack from Daryl Taylor. Decent performances even though we lost. Not bad. And up against the Dallas Cowboys here, we take our third straight loss of the preseason, of course. Some upgrades here. Ryan Neal, one of my boys. Let's go, let's go a uh, zone for him. So not much of a zone upgrade, but plus two awareness, plus two, or plus one acceleration isn't bad either. Decent there. And we actually have a trade offer for Will Disley. I mean, I'm not planning on trading him, but if we see something crazy here, I don't love the trade offers in this year's Madden. They're always player for player, and that's not really ever what teams do. I mean, rarely do teams ever trade player for, pl for player. There isn't really anything here that would really help us either. I mean, we could go with this one from Denver, but no. Even if these were good offers, I probably wouldn't trade Uncle Will, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, those just aren't good offers, but we have to make some cuts here. This shouldn't be too hard, honestly. We kind of know what we're gonna do. I'm gonna keep DJ Dallas. Let's cut Cody Thompson, who the Seahawks really like in real life. He'll probably go to the Buccaneers and join Tom Brady as his millionth white wide receiver. We can cut Tyler Ott. I mean, long snappers don't really mean anything in this game. On the offensive line, are there any, like, really ex I mean, let's be real. We don't really need Kyle Fuller. Uh, <laughs> on the D line, I want to keep Miles Adams for now, unless we like have to cut him. Daryl Johnson, unfortunately, might have to go. I just don't think he's going to get any playing time here. I do like him, but buried behind a very deep group of players that I do like, he's just probably not going to do much. I'm not going to cut the GOAT Nick Belor, but I might move him back to fullback. We'll practice squad John Radigan. Has looked very good when he's played, but again, deep group. And then the corners here. We have a ton of corners. We'll practice squad Isaiah Dunn and John Reed, and we might look to free agency. Is there anything we really need? I kind of feel like getting some, uh, ooh, Matt Breida. Ooh, ooh, Sheldon Richardson. We could, we could bring him back. 
Do we really need to though? Oh, this would be such a fun storyline. Let's bring back Malcolm Smith, Super Bowl MVP. Honestly, I kind of want the Seahawks to do that in real life. Bring some older players back. They need some linebacker help right now. That's kind of a fun one. I really like that. So Malcolm Smith for now is gonna be our number two linebacker. He is an older player, but like I said, Super Bowl MVP is an upgrade immediately over Cody Barton. Cody Barton is obviously the younger player here, but I'm not too big of a fan of him in real life. So for now, at least we're gonna turn it over to franchise legend, Malcolm Smith. And honestly, let's let's stay in free agency. I wanna make one more addition. Ooh, LaMarcus Joyner. Let's bring back Tedrick Thompson, actually. We're bringing back some former Seahawks here. I just want a player with good coverage. I really liked him coming out of Colorado. We'll bring him in as the number two free safety. Obviously not the uh, flashiest additions here, but some fun ones. And we need to make some more cuts. For now, Joey Blunt is gonna go on the practice squad. I don't think he's gonna get poached by any means. And I think let's cut Josh Jones. So I guess you could call this an episode one slash pre-episode one. We will get the depth chart reordered and obviously play our first game against the Russell Wilson-led Denver Broncos in the next episode. But until then, this team has a very bright future. A lot of young players with good dev traits and just a lot of players that could perform in general. So I am very, very excited for this series. But I hope to see you next time to see our very first game with this team. But until then, thank you all so much for watching. Again, be sure to like and subscribe because it takes you like two seconds and it helps me out a ton. And imagine if everyone did it, we'd be at like 300, 400 likes and 5 million subscribers. I don't, I don't know. But as always, I I will see you guys again in the next video. Goodbye.